This video is made with generous donations from amazing furries, just like you. All right, now let's just rock and roll. <sighs> hey everybody, and welcome back to Make a Masterclass, the show where I teach you how to make fursuits from the ground up. Before we could get into it, merch drop. Hey. So I've got this sky kind of mess tee. I'm gonna flip the pop mad squat to show you guys. But look, I've got yeah, Kevin, my pretty print. I've got Steve-O, where's Steve-O? He's over here, I'll grab him. The resemblance, uncanny. I've got sky there, there's fur, foam, the flaming hot glue gun, there's a salt shaker somewhere. So all the references to the channel on this one, I really like it. I'm really happy with it and, 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 and. And the thing I'm probably most excited for are the varsity jackets. Check those out. You've got sewing machine and scissors there. You've got a little winged doggo there. It has SH for sky high. It's got sky high shoes here. And then the big logo at the back. I cannot like believe how good these turned out. So you guys can get one right now. I've wanted to offer these for years and now I can. So the link to that will be down below with my new website. So be sure to check them out if you're keen to support me in the channel. All right, well, let's just get on with today's lesson then, shall we? Today's lesson is foams. I can say that, like, where did you get your foams, guys? It's probably one of the most common questions I get asked, so I hope this video will sort that out for you all. Let's get going. Okay, foam is one of the most commonly used non-fabric materials to make fursuits out of. Whether it's your classic upholstery foam, or even harder EVA foam, or even two-part chemical mixtures that make foam when combined, you will find it in pretty much any fursuit you see. So today, I will be covering the types of foams, what they're used for, where I buy mine, where you can buy yours, and how much of it you need. As always, there will be a Patreon-exclusive extra credit class for this one where I talk about um, more niche foam work techniques, such as using foam clay, using using heat to shape EVA foam, how to sand your foams, both EVA and upholstery, um, and more. So let's just jump right on in. If you're interested in checking it out, there is a link in the description to my Patreon for you all. Part one, types of foams. As fursuit makers, we use a variety of different foams for different things, and every maker has their preferences on what they like to use for their suits. So let's start with the um, most common. I'm gonna get it. Eh. Oh. Upholstery foam, this is it here, squishy like a couch. So, so this, is what you, this is what usually would come to mind when you think of like fursuit making foams. <laughs> but Scoo, what does upholstery foam even mean? Well, upholstery foam is, well, um, used foam for upholstery. Then I'll just tell you, uh, couches and stuff, seats, that kind of stuff. Um, if you wanna get technical, it's a soft, flexible, open cell polyurethane foam that comes in different densities. So how stiff it is. But um, what density should you use? Well, that's 100% up to you. Um, uh, and your preferences. However, I would recommend somewhere on the mid to high, even higher density side, as the low side tends to kind of like deform and get softer over time and can make things like lower jaws and ears kind of like droop or flop over a couple of years. Um, I use this stuff here, this is high density. Um, this is from Clark Rubber. It's from, for use it for most of my calves. Um, it's easy to cut with scissors and it holds up pretty well over time um, and hot glue sticks to it well. But some makers prefer something a little bit more solid. Take, for example, the, a scooter of Seagun. Seagun, these foam base is made by By Cats for Cats. They used a foam called acoustic foam. It is a lot stiffer than upholstery foam and it's designed to help acoustics when recording music and to cushion things like microphones for transport. It's really great if you want a heavier, more solid base. I would still kind of class it under a kind of upholstery foam. It's just a little bit stiffer. All right, next up is EVA foam. It's this stuff. I've only got this little kind of spindly bit left, but I will show you guys what it is. So here you go, you can see it's dense and black kind of color usually most of the time. Well. It is the kind of foam that you see in both craft foam and foamies, the kind of thin stuff that you see with kids craft. Um, and those, and these specifically, interlocking floor mats you can buy for kids' playrooms. So, you know, it clicks together with these things. If you want to get technical, it's a closed cell ethyl vinyl acetate copolymer foam. Thank you, chemistry, for letting me know how to pronounce that. Uh, it's a lot denser. It's really quite dense. You can still bend it, but it's quite squishy. Um, and it's stiffer than upholstery foam too. Um, I personally use this kind of stuff for things like ears, or I want them to both be a bit stiffer um, and hold their shape longer as the suit ages. I use it for the bottoms of feet paws to give a stiffer base to walk on and for things like antlers and like kind of cosplay making technique users, I usually use this thinner stuff. Uh, but some makers use it for the whole head base. For example, take Mugiwara cosplay, for example. EVA foam, I find I can struggle a little bit with hot glue, um, but it holds well using specialty glue such as contact cement and super glue. Uh, it can be carved easily with a craft knife rather than scissors, but you can use scissors too. And it can also be sanded and heat can be used to shape it as well. Um, but being denser, it will last better in the long run as well. 
Next up is expanding foam mixtures. This is what it looks like. I've got to, I'll grab a base to show you what it comes out like too. If you have some know-how, you can also use this two-part chemical mixtures to make your own foam, see? Foam, squishy, very good. Uh, this can be done using a mold. Often these are made of silicon and plaster, but more recently people have been 3D printing them too. Uh, here's a look at one of those look like, so I'll grab it. So this, is what it this is what it comes out as, I'll show you the mold. This is my silicon and plaster one. So you can see that's the hollow form inside. It comes out like this. And that's the plaster shell. It's two-part plaster shell. So it sits in there. Pour the chemicals into here and it rises like bread. It comes out like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's essentially the same chemical makeup as upholstery foam. But when handling, um, be sure to use appropriate PPE, such as gloves and a respirator, to avoid inhaling fumes from both your foam and your release agent. Now, it will usually tell you on the box the density of the finished product. So mine's 50, 50 kilos, 50 kilos per square meter, I think it is. Cube, meter cubed, meter cubed. Um, so you, you can use that to calculate how much you will need. How you ask, <laughs> if I know. Uh, I mess it up every single time I do it, even with apparently correct maths. So um, ask your maths teacher, it's certainly not my strong suit. Uh, so for my mix, again, it's 50 kilos per square meter and whatever that means. <laughs> um, expanding foams is usually in, a, is in two parts. So with a ratio that you have to mix it in usually by weight. So for example, mine is 100 to 45 by weight. So if I use 100 grams of part A, I then need to use 45 grams of part B. And the box will tell you how long you have to mix it together before the foam starts to expand, so be sure to work quickly. In my case, I have around eight seconds, so I really gotta get mixing very quickly. Once it's mixed, you pour it into your prepared mold and wait. The foam will start to rapidly rise and expand, almost like a loaf of bread. If bread let off bad chemical fumes, of course. Um, the mixture will also begin to warm up quite intensely, so for God's sake, don't touch it. As tempting as it looks to stick your finger in it, because it is very tempting don't get me wrong. Uh, it will not come off your clothes or your hair uh, if you do get it on you and you don't want it to burn your skin either. <laughs> if it overflows, just let it and once it finishes expanding, it will shrink back just a touch and then leave it alone for the demold time specified on the box. Once you take it out of the mold, I like to kind of like jump on it and step on it a bunch, just gets the stinky air out of it and lets the foam breathe a little bit more. And then you have a head block. <laughs> All you have to do now is carve out space for the bucket head or mount it to a balaclava or elastics or however you want to do it. Um, I'd say expanding foam is somewhere between EVA and high density um, upholstery foam. Uh, but you can buy all kinds of different densities, so play around and see what you like. Uh, expanding foams are often used for heads. Uh, however, I've also seen them used for foot pull toes or even complex like hand shapes, like padding. It's interesting, you can do a lot of stuff with it. Now we move on to part two, where to buy? Where do you buy it? All right, so let's start with upholstery foam. So this is a weird question for me and I've gotten asked it so many times, but um, because when people ask me specifically where I buy my foams, my answer isn't often very helpful. Uh, I buy my foam from an Australian local pool and foam store called Called Clark Rubber. Uh, considering over half of my audience is American, uh, this is less than helpful to you guys because you can't, it doesn't, they don't ship internationally. Uh, so let's get into where you can buy it, where anybody can buy it. So this is how you do it, very complicated, you need to listen up, all right? So step one, you go to this website called Go, 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 Gogley, Gogley, um, and then you type in the thing where it says search upholstery foam buy near me. There you go, there it is, amazing. I know, it's so complicated. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only half joking um, though, for real. Google can get you 75% of the way there with most things you need to find. Um, if you want something I can at least kind of attest to for USA peeps, there's an Amazon affiliate link in the description for you to buy the stuff I talk about so um, Daddy Bezos can throw me some crumbs. But if you don't want to support the Bezos empire or don't live in freedom land, uh, I will again to refer to the amazing website that is Fursuit Materials. Uh, click the foam tab and scroll to find a supplier in your area or relatively near by your area. Um, you'll usually find upholstery foam in craft stores or rubber and foam stores. Often the latter will also sell pool supplies too. Uh, don't ask me why that is, I just don't have the answers. That being said, um, please don't use used foam from old couches or mattresses. Um, I don't know about you, but the idea of someone's ass sweat pressing up against my face isn't exactly appealing um, every time I wear my fursuit. That's gross, that's nasty, disgusting. Uh, when I'm making a fursuit head, I will also usually buy a roll of this stuff, which I did bring with me, of one centimeter thick um, high density foam for my bucket head base and smaller facial details uh, for my main head base carve. If I need some foam to do new digi shapes or new foot pull shapes, I will grab a meter square or so worth of foam that's around four inches thick to work with for those. Um, for a head, I'll usually just raid the offcuts. This is plenty. This is plenty, so it's about a meter and a, by a quarter of a meter, if, if that. Uh, but you can get probably about you know a meter by half a meter of this stuff. It's about two inches thick. I think. 
one to two, one and a half to two inches thick. Um, if I'm making wings, I'll usually grab another roll of a thin foam or even one to two centimeter thick sheets of acoustic foam if I'm making larger scale wings and I need them to be stiffer. All right, now let's move on to EVA foam. This stuff. Um, so EVA foam can usually be purchased from the same in-person location as upholstery foam, but you can also buy it from places like Kmart here in Australia. Yes, Americans, we have Kmart, they rock. They're in most towns, but they're not the same ones that closed down all those years ago in America. They're different, they're different. Uh, though I suspect Walmart may be equivalent to our Kmart. Though, if I'm honest, I have no idea what Walmart actually is or what they sell or rather what they don't sell. At this point, I'm too scared to ask. So look around, Google it, you'll find it. Um, hardware stores such as Bunnings here in Australia will also stock like the floor mat variety, this kind of thick stuff. Usually you can get a pack of four big floor tiles a meter by a meter for 10 to $15 Aussie. If I'm using the thicker stuff, these ones that made into floor mats, I will buy them from Kmart usually. But if you want something thinner, well, that's when you can look at cosplay supply stores for stuff like this. This is a, uh, I don't know of any in-person cosplay stores myself, but no, I don't know of any in-person cosplay stores myself, but there is tons of online ones that sell EVA foam in various thicknesses for cosplay use. Uh, there'll be a few in the foam section of fursuit materials, so be sure to check it out. Um, and there'll be an affiliate link in the description if you want to be without a doubt. The thinnest type of EVA foam, which I don't know if I have. I might have it actually. Now this one's glitter on it, still the same. This is the thinnest stuff here, super thin. It's craft foam, basically. Uh, this is, yeah, kids craft foam, or foamies, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you get it in sheets and in pretty much any craft store under the sun. Uh, we often use this foam for fursuit eyes, uh, but people use it for feathers and similar stuff as well. I don't personally use it anymore, but you can if you want to. For a standard fursuit, I would only use really one of the floor tiles for like beat the EVA foam. Maybe one and a half if I'm doing wings for the armature parts, but um, if you're blocking the whole head base out in EVA, refer to the pattern or just buy the whole pack. Look, I think you'll have enough. And anything else you may use it for will have to be done by a trial and error to determine how much you need. A lot of it is just guesswork, guys. I don't have all the answers for you. Sometimes you gotta figure it out yourself. All right, expanding foam. Uh, this one is definitely more on the specialist end of things and as long as the same vein as silicon and resins. Um, you want to buy it from a place that specializes in special effects or prop making. I buy mine from Barnes here in Australia, um, another local business. Um, however, under re resins and silicones on the Fursuit Materials website, you'll be able to find a supplier um, in your area. But be warned, this stuff isn't really that cheap. It is specialty after all. Um, no affiliate for this one. It is chemicals after all, but I, and I can't really attest for chemical quality. I'm not a chemical engineer. How much I need for any project will largely depend on my cast. My larger head molds, not this one, um, use about 350 grams of part A. My Mono uses 275 and my new hollow canine base uses 160 or so. I'm still kind of dialing that one in. Um, the boxes will usually give you way, way, way more than that. So you should have enough for the inevitable failed casts as you learn how to use it or dialing in your molds. Um, it can take a little bit to get the hang of. Now, I think that just about covers everything. Uh, did I miss anything? Do you guys have any questions? Uh, let me know down below and remember to check out my Patreon where the extra credit class is for this video that's available to all tiers where I cover things like sanding things, which is something I didn't really know you could do until recently. Uh, heat, using heat to, to carve and shape EVA foam. Uh, what else am I gonna do? Uh, foam clay to do funky little things like that. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. So if you wanna watch that, it's available right now on Patreon. And be sure to check out my website for this sick merch. I'd love to see some people wearing these varsity jackets. I adore them, they're stunning. I'm so happy to grab them. But please do check that out. That's in the description as well. Uh, thank you all for coming to class today and I will see you next lesson where we'll be covering all the tools and machines that you will need to make your suit. I hope to see you there. Bye for now.